Sam Hauser signs a four-year, $45 million extension, and we wrap up Summer League right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Hal on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds game in locked on NASA. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finish locked on. Celtics pod, home of the women. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. I got you covered every Monday through Friday with a free, fresh podcast that drops directly to your device when you subscribe. So do that. Get onto that YouTube page. Get into the comment section. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I'm also the author of Built Different, the commemorative book celebrating this Boston Celtics championship run. Find it at booksellers online at local stores in the New England area. So go check that out. Thank you very much for doing so. Uh, Coming up today, well, first of all, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as sports stop sporting the way we want them to this summer. FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster bonus daily. So there's something for everybody every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So later on, we'll wrap up Summer League second and third segments. We'll get into uh, kind of the game, the final game against the Sixers and just some final Summer League thoughts overall. But let's start with Sam Hauser, four-year, $45 million extension, staying with the Celtics. So it's an extension which the Celtics already picked up his – uh, player, uh, the team option for this upcoming season. So he's going to make a little over $2 million this upcoming season. And then next year he makes somewhere around 10 million. It goes up. The average annual value is a little over uh, $11 million a year. So probably starts at like eight or nine. I didn't do the whole math because it doesn't really matter. He's going to get $45 million over four years. That takes him to about his 31st birthday, which First of all, when I was looking at that, I'm like, oh, man, Hauser's already 26. He turns 27 in December. So he's an older you know, player. He's been in the league for three years already. The Celtics got him at a bargain before, and now they're getting him at a little bit of a bargain again. Uh, he's making more than some of the, you know, some, some names that are recognizable, uh, making more than... Uh, Buddy Heald, he's making more than Kelly Oubre. He's making more than Caleb Martin. And that's, you know, that's about where he should be. He's a, obviously, we don't have to go through his credentials, but 42% three point shooter. His defense is, has gotten to a point where he can be on the floor, even if he's not getting all of the shots. And even if he misses a couple, he can stay on the floor for an extended period of time. Where last year it was, if Hauser's not taking and making shots, he's kind of not really worth being on the floor. Now you can you can trust him to do a little bit more. He can make passes. He can make plays. He can cut. He's not just making three-pointers. I mean, there was a stretch last year where we were talking about Slam Hauser. He was out there catching alley-oops and stuff, and that was one of the funnier moments of the, of the year early on was uh, Jalen Brown throwing Sam Hauser the lob uh, which is hilarious. Uh, the, the reaction there was really funny, but you know, Hauser can go out there and, and, and do some good work. So, and he's just turning 27 in December. So he's hitting, he's hitting his prime. He's hitting his athletic peak. So, and to be, give him the full credit, each of his first three seasons in the league, he has added to, you know, the defensive element of his game his his offense has gotten more varied. He's gotten noticeably, significantly better in each of the first three seasons. So he could come back with more. He could come back with, you know, maybe a little bit better handle, maybe a little bit uh, quicker release or something, maybe, maybe a little something different in his bag, something that you can, you know, if you run him off of the line, what can he do? And 
Maybe, maybe there's just more to, to his game that more, more on the move stuff. You know, there, there's a lot that he can add and to get him at about $11 million a year on average is, is pretty good. It's a good deal for him. He probably could have gone into free agency next year and, and maybe gotten a little bit more, but honestly, I think guys are starting to get a little scared of free agency. I think the second apron and some of the guys like Tyus Jones, like th those guys that are still kind of hanging out there and maybe some guys that you think maybe they got a little bit below market value or what we thought was market value. I think, I think that's scaring some guys and you saw Derek white take a, a contract that he could have gotten more next year if he uh if he went into free agency probably hauser probably could have gone through this upcoming season he's already got a championship if they win it again next year then you know the two championships would be something that teams want they want that championship experience it's going to benefit guys but at the same time you take the Sometimes you take the sure thing because you like where you are, you you like your role, you like how things are going, you like the opportunity to go for a championship, which Celtics are the NBA belt champions. You know, on top of the that's the audio listeners. I apologize. It's that's just me adding the graphic to my YouTube page uh, because I just keep forgetting to do that. But that scenario that he could just like where he is and say $45 million, you know, after taxes and paying your agent and all that stuff, it's, you know, 30 million, you know, 20, whatever it is that you take home, it's still a lot of money. And for Hauser, he's, he, he's gone through, he, he will, he'll be 31 by the time this contract is up as a shooter at 31, you still have an opportunity to make another couple of big deals and maybe maybe that at that point of his career he steps into the uh somebody's got cap space and you get the the two year 40 million dollar crazy contract that a team at the salary floor needs to spend and you say hey you know what we're we're going to we're going to give this guy a little boost four years from now who knows maybe that team will be the Celtics four years from now. We don't know what they're going to be in four years. We don't know what we're going to be in two years. So I can see the value for Hauser of taking, we'll call it a hometown discount, a little bit of a hometown discount. I can see the value in it for the Celtics, obviously, even though this brings not this upcoming season, the following season, that's when his extension kicks in. It brings the 25-26 Celtics up to between <laughs> salary and taxes, about five hundred million dollars uh, out of pocket for the owners, whichever whoever the new owners are. Which, by the way, makes me feel like the people who are there, like Pags and some of the the current owners, I think they're going to form their own ownership group because committing to that level of of money now, when you could have waited. For a sale, like if the sale is going on this at the end of this year, by the end of this year, why give Derek and Sam those contracts when the new owner has to come in and be like, do, do I really want to spend this much money or what? But the Celtics are doing their business. So I feel like the, the new owners are going to be mostly the old owners. But hey, look, the Celtics are going to be, be a very expensive team two seasons from now. I think they're obviously they're running it back. They're bringing everybody back. The only new guy on this team is going to be Baylor Shireman and these, you know, may, maybe the, you know, two way, you know, Anton Watson on the two way deal. So they're running it back. And if they win it again, especially if they win it again, okay, go one more time. Let's do it one more time. See if you can get three. So I think this is just setting them up for a, 
a, a three, a potential three year championship run where you're, you got the one. Now you're trying to get one or two more. And then after that, you can make whatever decisions you have to make at $11 million a year. He's easily tradable. If you need to make a move, you can easily trade him. He's the type of guy that a lot of teams want. And at $11 million, a lot of teams will want him. Um, so good deal all around. Just a, a good, solid deal for him, even though he could have gotten a little bit more. A good, solid deal for the Celtics, even though it makes them incredibly expensive when you add the taxes to it. It's just the wins, wins all the way around. Now, let's figure out if any one of these guys, like Baylor Shireman or uh or or, or uh, Jordan Walsh or Anton Watson can join them and help them win one of these banners. Let's wrap up Summer League when we come back. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Sports are slowing down, right? The Olympics are here. The WNBA is taking a month off while the women participate. Uh, Summer League is just about over. Major League Baseball is back from its all-star break, but there's really not much going on. But FanDuel is still keeping this summer interesting by giving every customer a boost or a bonus every single day. So there's something for everybody all summer long. Head on over to FanDuel and start making the most out of your summer. I've got those WNBA championship odds. The Connecticut Sun, I like the Connecticut Sun, uh, plus 800. The New York Liberty and Las Vegas Aces are both plus 155. That's probably going to be the WNBA Finals. So, But, hey, you want to throw some money down on Connecticut as a dark horse uh, team? Go for it. Head on over to FanDuel.com. It's the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And also use the tools to gamble responsibly. Set your budget. Set your limit. Go have some fun with your disposable income. FanDuel, it's the place to go. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's all the, the big stories. You'll find me on there every once in a while. Uh, so go check it out. Real sports talk all the time, every time you tune in, uh, because you don't want the fake stuff. Boston Celtics wrap up Summer League. With a loss, they finished, what, two and three? Not that that matters. The loss doesn't matter. Uh, but the Celtics uh, done after five games. In this particular game, Jordan Walsh snaps out of his slump, four of eight from three. The eighth three-pointer was a, uh, you know, a two-for-one kind of situation where it was the end of the game and they just needed a quick three. They didn't it, – it was going up no matter how he was defended. So – uh, I'll, I'll say four of eight, but really four of seven, 18.7 rebounds, two assists, two blocks, six turnovers, not great. Uh, but for, for Walsh, who came into the game, I think it was Oh, for 21 to, to go and hit four and he's finished. So he finishes four of 29, still not good, but to go and have one of those nights where the shots started to fall. Really great to see him kind of snap out of that. And the, I think because like, I remember in the last, like last week I, I talked about, it seemed like he was kind of fading. He might've, he might've been leaning back on one of his, you know, on, on a couple of those shots. And I, I thought like, Hey, if you can just rebalance yourself, you could probably start hitting some of these. Well, the first one that went in was an offensive rebound by Shireman that he just in the air flicked out to Walsh. Walsh got it, stepped right into it, was moving towards the hoop, and that thing went right in. So good balance, you know, not fading away from the rim. He went towards it, and, and yeah, stepping into your shots, is, it just gives you that that momentum that you got you got to be careful. Like only the best of the best can kind of have that little fade on a three pointer, that shot is a long way away. I know you see it on TV and you're like, that's far. When I'll stand on the court and I'll be on the, on the parquet floor at the garden and be behind the three point line. I'm like that is an incredibly long shot. Like when you're on the floor and you're looking at it, like that is, 
how do they do this? And yeah, maybe some guys develop a little bit of a fade to maybe give themselves uh, uh, some room on a closeout. You got to be really, really good at that. It's a streaky shot anyway, because it's a perfect shot. When you're shooting from that far away, the form, the release, all that stuff, there's really so much less margin for error. So if any little bit of your shot is off, it can lead to some cold spells, some shots. Maybe when you're you're a little bit closer, you can be a little bit wonky and on your release and it, it's not going to be as bad. The ball doesn't have to travel as far. So there's not as much variance in, in the path. But anyway, Walsh to get to, to see him hit a few of these shots was, was really great. Uh, I'm not entirely like thrilled with his summer outside of that. It's not like he just had a cold summer and uh, everything else was great. He did do other things in this game, like I said, but he's still a little frantic. I think he's still, you know, was still a little in his own head and trying to do too much. Like that was, that's been a problem for him. I don't think the setting did him any favors. So I want to see him play more within his role. And he admitted it. He said it once last week and he said it again in a, uh, before, like between the third and fourth quarters that he played better because he's playing more within the game plan. It's not great that he kind of got away from that. And, and I, as Tom Westerholm and I have talked about multiple times on this show over the past week and a half, he has NBA level skill. All of these guys have NBA level potential. It's just, can you find it? Can you nurture it? Can you develop it? And so I, I didn't like the summer for Jordan Walsh, but it, it doesn't sour me. I'm not sitting there saying like, he's not going to be uh, an NBA player. I, I do think there's a lot of potential here. It's only his second year. He's still a young kid. He's what, 20 years old. So I, I don't think this is uh, any sign necessarily that, oh no, he's not an NBA player. I do think he's still potentially, he still has, can be a part of an NBA rotation. Is it with the Celtics? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe he needs more time on an NBA floor to kind of dial in. There's a there's a line between the maximum effort and playing out of control. And I think his maximum effort takes him out of control. And he has to find a way, as I say all the time, I said it, I'll say it again. Slow down to speed up. Do the things that you do best. Do them as fast as you can while under control. And then start to figure out how you can do them faster while under control. So you can still, maybe you can run up the floor faster than you are dribbling the ball. But when I see him dribbling the ball, he's, it's like his body is moving at 1.2 speed and the ball is being dribbled at one. And it's just a little out of, out of sync. So I just want to see him get everything together. Play fast, but under control. Baylor Shireman, uh, I didn't like his summer. I really kind of didn't. It was mixed bag. I'll put it mixed bag. Obviously, his passing was really good, and it was better early on. I didn't like this game from him. Uh, he, he got going late, and I'm not sure if this was a... Uh, he's tired. He's worn out. Uh, maybe the heat got to him. Maybe the setting got to him. Uh, not used to playing this much. Maybe he was a little out of shape. And whatever it is, at the beginning of this game, for most of this game, I'd say for three quarters of this game, it didn't look good. It it really didn't. He his sh his shot never really materialized in in Vegas, and. In this one, he looked either passive or gassed or uninterested. I hope to hell it wasn't uninterested. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt to say that it wasn't, but he looked uninterested. 
And I can, I'm going to say because of it's summer league and I can't imagine why a guy would be uninterested at that point, but I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, maybe he was just tired. And then at the end, when it was like, Hey, we, we have an opportunity to maybe win this game. He stepped it up and hit a couple of shots and hit a real deep three pointer. Maybe that kind of got him going and he saved like a, a final push. That's, that's the positive side of it. So I'll give him that benefit of the doubt, but I didn't like his game and I didn't like what, all right, I'll put it this way. There's something about his shot that I don't like. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. We know the formula for winning championships in Boston. It's passion, it's drive, it's patience. That also is what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They've got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and a ton more. So whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. Plus, with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the Jalen Brown, the MVP, and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA. I'm hosting on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. We're here every Wednesday. Locked On NBA is still five days a week and will be all summer long. So make sure you are subscribed there wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. This show goes down to three days a week, August and September, because things start to slow down, And but it's still more podcasting than you're going to get anywhere else because you love the Celtics. And we're talking Celtics all summer long. So what I didn't, what I don't like about Shireman's shot is the misses are wonky. The misses, the shot, I can kind of tell just by his shooting form. I'm like, oh God, that looks terrible. That's going to miss. And then there are shots where I'm like, oh God, that looks so good. That's going in. I can tell right away. And that's not what you want to see. I, it's weird. But you don't want to be able to tell if the shot's going to make or miss, right? You, you watch Sam Hauser shoot. Started the, the show with Sam Hauser. You watch him shoot. He takes that shot, and you don't know if it's going in or out. You're just kind of in anticipation, like ah, oh, oh, or ah, oh, yeah. With Shireman, it's like ah, oh, nope, never mind. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna focus on the rebounders. Gonna see who can get this rebound. And that's, that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's, I'll be honest with you. I haven't really watched a ton of them in college. So I got to go back and, you know, one of my summer things is like, to just go back and kind of see, see what I've, what I've witnessed and kind of go into his college game and see, okay, how does this jive with some of the things? Is he nervous? Uh, or is this just something to, to expect? I don't like how hard it looks for him to, to like, he's really snapping that wrist. I don't know. There's something about it that feels off and it could just be how he shoots. And you know what? He can end up being a 40% three point shooter with a weird shot. If let's put it this way. If Reggie Miller was just coming into the league now and he was at summer league and he had a rough summer league. And with that shot, I a hundred percent would be sitting here and be like, that shooting form is awful. I don't know how. There's no way he's going to have, uh, like, cut him, dump him. There's no way he's going to be able to hit three-pointers. Like, how how can he, like, with that form, it's a fluke. Obviously, it was not a fluke. So, I'm I'm not writing anybody off at this point. It's just something I don't like about it. And, and that's all I can say. I didn't like his summer, uh, but his passing is great. His defense is not. He's got to work on that. So I think this is going to be a big developmental year for him. I don't see him 
as of right now, and this is July, this is July 21st, 22nd. As of right now, I'm like, eh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. But that doesn't mean that I can't see it in September, October, I should say, uh, November, you know, training camp, preseason. Doesn't mean that I can't see it then. I, it could just be, this could just be summer, first taste of it. Not a big deal, right? It's just my initial reactions, gut reactions. I'm the first person to tell you that summer league doesn't really matter that much, although things that don't go well matter more than things that do go well. But I'm not, I'm not making any declarations at this point. I, I want to make a declaration about Anton Watson, though, because once again, I think he played well. I think he was the best player for the Celtics at Summer League. I think he was their mo most consistent basketball player. He kind of just knows how to play the game. Uh, there's a lot of you know, fine-tuning. For him, I think there's NBA speed and NBA execution that that still needs to be learned, obviously. But I think he's he's a grown up who plays grown up basketball, and his jump shot looks good. I like the way his jump shot looks. I like his confidence. I like the fact that he always seems to be even keeled. He's not uh, he's not demonstrative in any way. He just goes and plays. There's a lot to like about Watson. Uh, Nothing was flashy for him uh, all all throughout summer league. But look, fifteen points, six of twelve shooting, two of five from three. Uh, he hit the one free throw that he took, four rebounds, three assists, and no turnovers. He has not turned the ball over much in summer league at all. Summer league is is full of turnovers. It's like the number one thing that people do in summer league is turn the ball over, and he has protected the ball, and he's had the ball in his hands enough where he probably could have had a couple of turnovers here or there, but I think he's generally protected the ball. Well, he shot well, he's defended well, not perfect, but I come out of summer league thinking Watson is the most NBA ready. Not that he is NBA ready, not that he is going to make a contribution, but if I'm going to pick from these guys, from those three guys, I think Watson is at the top of the list and Walsh can get there. Shireman has work. And I, I think I actually would put, I'm going to say, I'm going to put Shireman and Walsh in the same category. They both have work to do. So does Watson. So does Watson, right? Again, no declarations here. No declarations here. He's probably not going to crack the rotation. In fact, of all the people on the summer league roster, because a lot of guys didn't play, we know Namiash Keda is going to get minutes because he's gotten minutes. And actually, my if I'm going to have a hot take for summer league, it's that Keda shouldn't have even played. He shouldn't have even played the couple of games that he did because he's the type of guy you probably could have sent him uh, home with some homework, like a sheet of paper, and you'd be like, okay, here, you, you've got to uh, work on your dribble handoffs. Let's let's kind of perfect those. Work on your screens, right? Let's get your footwork down. Let's see if you can develop a little bit of a jumper. You're going to be on the short roll a little bit. Let's put down 10, 12, 15 footers. Let's see if you can develop some of that stuff. Just in case they, they sag off of you, we want to see you be able to take that. So here's one, two, three points. There you go. Take this with you. Go. That's your homework for the summer. He didn't have time between the championship run and summer league to start working on any of that. What did he work on in summer? He didn't do anything at summer besides be himself, which is fine. But we know what he is. He knows what he is. Let's work on some of the skills that are going to make you even better at what the Celtics need you to be. So you can enhance who you are, be a better version of yourself. So I think. Kata being on the roster was kind of a waste of time. He should have been at the practice facility or with a personal trainer or somewhere somehow practicing, working on some of these skills. And then you can find a, I don't know, find a pro-am or find something, find a scrimmage somewhere where you can work on that stuff. So I think it was a waste of time for him. We know, we know who he is. He didn't have to show us 
any of that stuff at summer league, but Jaden Springer is of all of the people on this roster. I still think Jaden Springer has a, has the best chance and might actually have a legitimate chance at cracking the, the top 10. Maybe he becomes the O'Shea Brissett type, uh, who, when, when a guy is out, when Tatum is out or Jalen is out, maybe beginning of the season, they pare down their minutes. Maybe they do hold Tatum or Brown out on a couple of back-to-backs here or there, just because it's the beginning of the season. They didn't have a long off season. And you say, all right, let's, we're going to really be super careful and we're going to work those guys back into things slowly, totally legitimate, totally legitimate approach. I think that might be something they want to do. I think Springer could be the guy from the summer league roster that steps into that. I want to see that jump shot be for real. I want to see that, that three pointer start to fall, but I think he has a real opportunity. He's an NBA level defender already. We've seen it. Let's see. Let's see some of that. And there's probably a reason why he didn't play more than I think he just played that one game. They didn't need him to play anymore. They, they see it, they get it. No problem. So that's what I think of summer league. I think Springer obviously has an opportunity. We know what Kata is. Watson has an outside chance at getting some minutes, like even if it's garbage time, somewhere there, I think Watson might be available in certain instances. He might have a chance. Shireman, at this point, I don't think so. Walsh needs more time. We'll see. We'll see what the rest of the summer brings. Again, it's only July. They've got August. They've got September. Work on some things. Work on your mentality. Work on whatever you need to work on, guys, to come into this situation and find a way to contribute. They've got plenty of guys who can contribute anyway. So it's not like they're looking for uh, a lot of help. but. When a guy like Brissett left, leaves, he did play some, not all the time, but he did play some. So somebody's got to step in and play some in his place. So we'll see. Back tomorrow with another new show. So make sure you are subscribed to the podcast. I'm going to thank you for sticking with the show all summer long. Again, still five days a week for the rest of July, which is not really much more of July. August and September, three days a week, but still plenty of podcasting. I'll bring some guests in, try to have some fun as we continue to talk about the world champion Boston Celtics over the course of the rest of the summer and into what we hope is another championship run. So thanks for subscribing. Thanks for getting into that YouTube page, uh, onto that YouTube page, into the comment section, and for sharing the podcast telling everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.